And we are back on Sportsman Radio. I'm your host, Chris Shanfell, and I am now joined by former Indianapolis Colts cornerback who is now one of the newest members of the Arizona Cardinals, Gerard Powers. Thanks for joining the show, Gerard. How's it going? It's going good. I appreciate y'all having me. Hey, my pleasure, man. My pleasure. Now, we're going to start this interview off by talking about your football career, then we'll talk about your football and healthcare camp that's coming up this weekend in your hometown, Decatur, Alabama. Does that sound good? That sounds good. All right, cool. I'll start off by saying in high school, you're rated as the eighth best player in the state of Alabama by Rivals.com. I'm sure you had many universities looking at you. Why did you decide Auburn University was the best fit for you? Uh, it, really, uh, it, came, it, it really came down to Auburn and Alabama, and I honestly thought I was going to go to Bama. I even gave like a soft commitment to Bama before my Auburn uh, visit. And uh, when I got, uh, when I left uh, Auburn that weekend, you know, I, I thought, and my mom thought, you know, it was just a better fit for me to go to Auburn, and uh, that's kind of how I ended up there. And you had spent three years at Auburn, and I, uh, I know you've had a pretty successful NFL career thus far, but if you decided to stay for your senior year, you would be a part of that undefeated BCS championship winning team. Do you ever look back and think about that? Uh, I, I look back on it sometimes, but uh, you know, I, don't, I don't regret the decision. It, it actually came two years uh, after I left. The, oh. the year I left, I think they ended up going like, uh, I want to say eight and five, and then they won a the national championship the year after that. But uh, you know, I look back on it sometimes because you know I saw guys like uh, Joe Hayden, you know, all those uh, uh, guys like that that I that I would have been competing with as the best corner in the SEC. You know, get drafted in the top top seven pick, so I kind of, uh, you know, uh, look back on that situation thinking, uh, you know, what could have been, but I don't regret it at all. And overall, how would you say your experience was at Auburn University? Uh, it was great. You know, I was surrounded by a lot of talent. Uh, you know, guys like, you know, the defense we had that year, uh, you know, Quinn Gross and Derek Marks, uh, Patrick Sands, uh, Patrick Lee, you know, all those guys went in the first three rounds of the draft. You know, we had a, we had a ton of talent and, uh, you know, Coach Muschamp, who was the head coach at Florida, was our coordinator there. So we, uh, I ended up learning a lot of ball from him and, uh, Coach Covell did a great job of, uh, you know, you know, having that family atmosphere around the facility and, uh, and the team. And, uh, you know, I had, I had a great time. I had a great time at Auburn. In the third round of the 2009 NFL Draft, the Indianapolis Colts select cornerback Gerard Powers out of Auburn University. What was that moment like for you to achieve your goal and make it to the NFL? It was crazy. It was surreal. Uh, you know, I used to always think the NFL was just so so far from being reached that, uh, you know, I was ready to you know, get an education degree and become a high school coach and live the life that I, I kind of had uh, planned out. But uh, once I saw my name go across that screen and, you know, got that call from uh, Bill Pulley and, you know, it uh, kind of put things in perspective. You know, it was a dream I've been, you know, chasing for a long time. It's just all that hard work paid off. And during your rookie year, you were able to see the field quite a bit. According to NFL.com, you started in 12 games and recorded over 60 tackles, an interception, and a forced fumble. As a cornerback, which would you rather have, an interception or a forced fumble? Oh, interception. Uh, no question. Uh, that's kind of how we're you know, rated. You know, the more, no more picks you get, kind of the more uh, respect you get around the league. And uh, I was blessed enough to you know, be an opening day starter. Uh, before the Indianapolis Colts for four years and, uh, you know, go to the Super Bowl and experience the whole nine in my rookie year, you know, was just something that I never would have imagined. But, uh, you know, uh, it, it was a lot of fun. And during that rookie season of yours, Gerard, you guys went 14-2, and two, winning the first 14 games and then lost the last two when you guys benched most, if not all, of your starters. Uh, you guys would then defeat the Baltimore Ravens and New York Giants in the playoffs and meet the New Orleans Saints in Super Bowl 44. What was it like to be a part of the biggest game of all time? Uh, it was crazy. Uh, you know, just seeing all those cameras, those lights flashing and kickoff, uh, you know, it was everything that you, you know, you thought it would be. And, uh, you know, just watching it on TV for so many years and then being a part of it, knowing all eyes on you and, you know, all the people that's watching the game, it, it, it was crazy. And I uh, can't wait to, you know, get back there, hopefully, with the Cardinals. Chris Shanfell here talking with Arizona Cardinals cornerback Gerard Powers on Sportsman Radio. Gerard, I want to fast forward to this past season. You guys had a, the number one overall pick in the NFL draft and got quarterback Andrew Luck, a new head coach in Chuck Pagano, and I don't think anybody expected you guys to go 11-5, and five, but you guys did. Unfortunately, head coach Chuck Pagano missed most of the season due to his battle with leukemia. Uh, how would you say that 
uh, that that uh, Colt Strong and Chuck Strong sayings and banners encourage you guys? Uh, they encourage a lot. You know, once a team found a purpose or a reason, you know, to go out there every week and compete and, uh, you know, have something to play for, you know, it kind of brings a lot of people together. And uh, unfortunately, when Coach Pagano uh, went down with the, uh, with the with cancer and, uh, you know, all those things, you know, a lot of emotions was running through our heads. We didn't know how, you know, what was going to change, how the team was going to adapt and everything. So we kind of just... You know, put that at the forefront. You know, let's do it for Chuck. Let's do everything we do. We're gonna do it for Chuck because we knew how bad he wanted to be a part and uh, be at work every day. So, you know, once we found a reason and a purpose, you know, no matter you know, you're in the NFL, so every team has a talent. It's just a matter of you know everybody gelling together and clicking. And you know, uh, Coach uh, Arians stepped in uh, for for Coach Pagano and did a terrific job of just keeping the team together. And you know, things happened out the way that we all planned it uh, to happen out. You know. Uh, season and you know a lot of people have you know written us off that you know we didn't have the talent and didn't have the pieces that we need to get it done but you know as that goes to show you know once a team put its mind on something it can be done. And during this off season drive you entered free agency and decided to sign a, a three year contract with the Arizona Cardinals. Of course Bruce Arians is now their head coach in Arizona. Was that a factor in you signing with the Cardinals? Yeah, it was, it was uh, uh, one of the factors as a player because I, I knew what type of guy D.A. was. I knew, uh, you know, how he was going to coach the team as a head coach, even though it was technically his second year being a head coach considering what, what happened the previous year. And, uh, you know, I knew knew what his vision was. And, you know, once I went in the free agency, you know, he was uh, one of the main teams that was trying to get me. And once I took my visit there, uh, me and my wife, you know, we definitely felt there was a perfect fit and a great opportunity to step in and, you know, try to bring that, that, that leadership and that, uh, that same winning mentality that we had in Indianapolis to Arizona. Uh, of course, you're out there with a very talented player and athlete in Patrick Peterson. You guys have a very talented rookie group, including uh, Tyran Matthew. How excited are you for this upcoming season? I'm very excited. You know, we have a, they had a, you know, a top 10 defense last year and, uh, I'm I'm excited to be a part of a, uh, of a group that that's already established, and you know we're just trying to get better from here. And you know, like you said, with Patrick Peterson, and you know, bringing in Tyran and Rashad Johnson and Yerma Bell, Javier Arenas, uh, Antoine Kason, and all those guys. You know, it's, it's a lot of guys that played a lot of football, and you know, guys that know how to get it done. So I can't wait to uh, watch training camp get here, so we can you know put this thing on the road and you know get it started because we have, we definitely have the talent to get it done now. Oh, you most certainly do. And uh, what can Arizona Cardinals uh, fans and really NFL fans around the world expect out of cornerback Gerard Powers this upcoming season? Uh, you're, you'll see a guy that's you know, flying around and enjoying football and having fun. You know, uh, you know I, Patrick Peterson won't be the only guy flying around the field making plays. You know, I think it's going to be a, a completely group effort as far as the secondary goes because we have a lot of playmakers in the backfield. But, uh, you know, you're going to see a guy that's you know, going to take control and be the leader that everybody knows he can be and, uh, you know, hopefully make make more plays than he's ever had before and uh, be fun to watch. Hey, man, I'm looking forward to it. Now, Drott, I have a few quick, fun questions to get to know you, Ben, then we'll talk about your camp that's going on this weekend. Does that sound good? All right. Drott, what's your favorite TV show and movie? Uh, favorite TV show would be Martin. Favorite movie would be Gladiator. Favorite thing to eat? Uh, my mom's spaghetti. <laughs> Favorite thing to do in your free time? Uh, I like to kind of play football with my 17-month-old son, even though he's playing in the CFL rules because he don't know how to sit still before I say hut. And uh, we kind of knock each other around a little bit whenever I got free time. All right, except for football, what is your favorite sport? Basketball. You're on Twitter at jpowers25. Why do you make it important to connect with your fans? I think it's very important. I think it kind of shows people that, you know, even though you know, we're in the NFL and to some people might even be celebrities, it just shows that, you know, we're still human. We're just like everybody else. And it's a direct line to communicate with the fans one-on-one -on -one instead of having to do it through a third party. If you're able to meet any famous person, who would that be and why? Uh, it'd probably be, probably be Jay-Z, just because, uh, I've been following him ever since I could uh, remember a, a rap song, and uh, he's, he's one of my all-time favorites. So. 
Hey man, you gonna be trying to uh, be a head coach for the Brooklyn Nets anytime soon? <laughs> Alright, so your your second favorite sport is basketball. You have a strong basketball background. Does that mean you're any good at basketball? <laughs> oh, definitely good at basketball. I, I'll challenge anybody in the NFL to a basketball game and uh definitely I'm pretty sure I come out on top. And if Darius Butler is listening to this from uh corner for the International Coast, I hope he hears this because he's one of the guys I gotta I gotta see this summer and I'm definitely gonna kill him. Hey man, next time you ever come out to Chicago I gotta get you in a one on one, you know. I, I think I could take you. Uh, we can we can do that even though I heard Chicago got a pretty pretty good basketball yep. background and stuff, but us, us Alabama people don't get the credit we deserve. <laughs> we'll have to see about that. Chris Shanfell here talking with Arizona Cardinals cornerback Gerard Powers on Sportsman Radio. Gerard, let's talk about what you're doing in the community and you actually have your first annual football camp uh, this Saturday, June 22nd, 2013 for ages 5 to 18 at Decatur High yep. School in your hometown, Decatur, Alabama from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Central Time. Can you tell, can you tell us more about this event? Yeah, uh, first of all, it's, it's free it's free for all. Um, that was sort of one of the main things I wanted to, to make sure I, you know, just a way of giving back to the community. And, uh, you know, it's easy to kind of put together a football camp, but I wanted the kids and the community to have something else they could take away from it. So uh, we came up with the idea of having a health fair for, uh, for the community, you know, and they're going to be checking, you know, for diabetes, uh, you know, eye exams, dental exams, you know, heart rate, you know, the whole nine yards. And I thought it'd be a good opportunity, especially for the kids that's underprivileged who, whose parents probably not had a chance or an opportunity to have their kids, you know, have a thoroughly uh, uh, full body exam. And, you know, it's just something they can just take away other than, you know, just coming and learning the game of football, which is uh, also very important. But uh, you know, I thought I thought the issues of health would be a lot bigger than football, and I uh, thought it would be a great idea to, to have a free you know health fair that, that the community itself, not just the kids, can come out and get a free screening and uh, you know take away some good from it. Yeah, man, that's definitely awesome. And for more details and to register, we can actually visit jpowerscamp2013.eventbrite.com. Correct. Now, I ask this to many of my guests, and I would like to ask you, why give back? There's so many athletes and celebrities out there that do give back to the community, but there are also those that don't. So, again, why does Gerard Power give back to the community? Uh, just because when I was coming up, uh, you know, there was a ton of programs that I was involved in, you know, with like Air and, uh, you know, people having basketball camps, football camps, and, you know, stuff that kind of helped me get along to where I am today. And, uh... Uh, my community today is not like it was when I was growing up. It, uh, it, it, all those uh, events and camps and everything, uh, a lot of them kind of, you know, just went away. And I thought, you know, me being in the position that I'm in and, uh, you know, kids who know who I am in the community, it would be a great way of just giving back where kids can come come to and meet some of their favorite football players and uh, have, a, have a chance to come and compete and, and uh, you know, interact with me and uh, whoever else I bring to the camp, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, get some autographs, you know, just something fun that they can uh, remember, you know, once, uh, you know, things go away, you know, down the road, they can be like, oh, I remember when I was six or when I was eight years old and drive Powers through a camp and I got to meet him and St. Derek Marks or whoever else, you know, is at the camp. It's just something that, you know, they can take with them for a lifetime. Well, it's definitely great things you're doing in the community. I'm wishing you nothing but the best of luck, Gerard. It was a pleasure to have you on the show. Before I let you go, is there anything else you'd like to plug on the air for myself and our listeners? Uh, no, I just appreciate you guys having me. Y'all never need me to talk again, y'all. I can see myself being a, a radio guy down the road, and hopefully, maybe I'll be competing with you guys on the show one day. Hey, that sounds great, man. Looking, uh, looking forward to this upcoming season. Best of luck and take care. I appreciate it.